following episode describes graphic details of deaths and injuries caused by fire. Listener discretion is advised. Sunday, July 15th, 1973. At around 3 p.m., the body of 56-year-old John Lund is pulled from under the rubble. John marks the 10th victim of a July 11th fire that destroyed the five-story rooming house at 728 Main Street. It took demolition workmen more than 72 hours to recover John's body from the debris. The fire was Worcester's deadliest in its history. Officials believe from the start that it was arson. The fire was purposefully set on the rear second floor porch. When the smoke cleared and all the building's tenants were accounted for, the investigation into who set the fire was underway. The city of Worcester started taking safety measures in hopes something like this tragedy would never happen again. Fifty years later, in Worcester's most notorious arson case, remains unsolved. Unsolved Worcester is brought to you by the following sponsors. Follow the crowd through the doors of Donut Homies and say hi to Haley Noel, the Donut Queen of Worcester's Canal District. Donut Homies is open inside the Worcester Public Market at 160 Green Street every Wednesday through Sunday at 11 a.m. Online ordering with delivery and pickup options is available at DonutHomies.com. Follow Donut Homies on Facebook and Instagram for monthly menu drops, specials, and more. Donut Homies, everything sweeter with the homies. Welcome back to Unsolved Worcester. I'm your host, Dan Yeager. Today's episode is part two of the two-part episode special on the 50th anniversary of the 728 Main Street Fire on July 11th, 1973. The deadliest fire in city history killed 10 people. An early marker in Worcester's long and tragic history of devastating fires. The fire started on the rear stairwell of the building's second floor and spread up the stairwells and across the building's floors. It reached the roof and the fire spread to the front of the building. In part one, we shared the terrifying moments of the deadly blaze, including the frantic attempts to escape by the Main Street rooming house tenants and details on each of the ten victims. In today's episode, we focus on the arson investigation and indictments, safety and fire prevention measures, taken by City Hall to keep landlords accountable in the future, and an 11th victim the fire would claim years later. Unsolved Worcester takes a deep dive every Tuesday into the unsolved murders and missing persons cases under investigation by the Worcester Police Department's detective unit. Our goal is to remind residents of the Worcester area, both past and present, there are dozens of unsolved homicides and missing persons cases that need resolution. We hope we can be the spark needed to solve a case. Be sure to visit Unsolved Worcester on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and listen to all episodes for free at unsolvedworcester.com and on your favorite podcast streaming platforms. Check out the video for this episode with exclusive aerial views and more on our Unsolved Worcester YouTube page. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. The first alarm of fire at 728 Main Street was received by the Worcester Fire Department at 2.59 a.m. on July 11, 1973. A second alarm at 3.02 a.m. A third alarm one minute later at 3.03 a.m. 
By 3.11 a.m., a fourth and fifth alarm sounded. Twelve water companies, five ladder companies, and a rescue company with 78 on-duty firefighters responded to the fatal fire. Two deputy chiefs, four district chiefs, and 205 off-duty officers and firefighters were called back to duty. Nearby Auburn and Shrewsbury fire departments made themselves available while city firefighters worked to put the fire out and assist tenants escaping the Main Street building. According to a report from the WFD, the rear porches were fully involved when the fire department arrived. Occupants were already hanging and jumping from the windows at the front and sides of the building. In the early stages of the fire, 17 tenants were sent to the hospital, and one had died. Within just a few hours, seven people would die. Within three days, the death count would hit ten victims. The Federal Wrecking Company of Millbury was in charge of demolishing the building at 728 Main Street. As the wrecking crew cleared the debris brick by brick, four separate investigations into who started the fire were underway. The State Fire Marshal's Office, the Worcester Police Department's Detective Bureau, the WPD's Juvenile Division, and the Worcester Fire Prevention Bureau all launched their own investigations within 24 hours after the deadly fire was put out. By early August 1973, both fire and police officials expected a break in the arson case, seeing they had two strong leads. Investigators interviewed and questioned more than 30 people in connection with the case, namely residents and neighbors who came forward with information about anything out of the ordinary they witnessed the night of the fire. On Monday, August 4th, 1973, three fires were started in Worcester's main south area on Piedmont Street, Newbury Street, and Chandler Street. Like the fire at 728 Main Street, the three fires were started in the same way on the rear back porch at the bottom of a stairwell. The chief of police department's juvenile division said they had a suspect in the three fires and strongly believed there was a connection between those fires and the deadly fire on July 11th. But a month later, in September 1973, the investigation was still ongoing with District Fire Chief George Berenger telling the Telegram and Gazette that the case was far from being closed. Later that fall, 25 people were called to testify in a central district court inquest organized by the district attorney's office, including the state's medical examiner and the Worcester Fire Chief. But the information gathered in the inquest failed to move the investigation forward, and the investigation remained at a standstill. A year later, in early July 1974, Worcester Police Captain Anthony Francis told the Telegram and Gazette, the noose is tightening around one prime suspect, that a motive had been established and that an arrest was imminent. By then, the number of people questioned in connection with the fire was more than 100. And from that group, the police were able to name up to 16 possible suspects. Former tenants of 728 Main Street were even gathered to review case evidence. The unnamed suspect was the investigation's target for much of 1974. In October of 1974, a man in his 40s testified in front of a grand jury that he had been approached by another man to set fire to the building at 728 Main Street in exchange for a payment of $2,500. The witness said he turned down the man's offer, but he knew of another man that received a similar offer. 
The grand jury would later hear testimony that a loan for $2,500 was issued to the unnamed suspect. Coming up, another dead end in the investigation paves the way for a pair of indictments. Indictments weren't brought forward against the investigator's number one suspect in late 1974. Grand jury apparently deeming the evidence was too thin, and there was no proof of an exchange of $2,500 to set the fire at 728 Main Street. However, police and fire officials quickly found reason to request arrest warrants in December 1974, for teenage girls from Worcester, 19-year-old Margaret Watkiss and 18-year-old Diane Cloutier were already serving sentences in Worcester County House of Corrections on other charges at the time the warrants were requested. According to a report, a pair of juvenile division detectives testified that both teens discussed in detail setting the fire at 728 Main Street. The detectives said both women stated they went to the Main Street building around 2 a.m. on July 11th with two cans of gasoline and matches. They said they poured the gasoline on the rear porch and Cloutier lit the match. They then split up and ran away from the scene of the fire. On December 10, 1974, the young women were ordered to undergo a 20-day psychiatric examination at Worcester State Hospital. The very next day, however, Watkiss was released from the hospital. Cloutier was also released early from the hospital on December 19th and returned to Worcester District Court, where her bail was increased from $2,000 to $5,000. Both women were charged with arson in connection with the 10 fatality fire at 728 Main Street on July 11, 1973. They were also charged with assault and battery on a female correctional officer and attempted escape from the Worcester County Jail and House of Correction. Additionally, the juvenile division chief of police sought an additional warrant for Cloutier in the murder of Roland Clarkson in September 1973. The request for a warrant in Roland's murder was apparently denied, but on January 14, 1975, the two teens were held on arson and attempt to escape charges. They were each held on a $7,000 surety bond for the grand jury. There's little information as to why the chief wanted to pin Roland's murder on Cloutier, but it's possible that she could have had also mentioned Roland's murder when speaking with the WPD detectives. We explored Roland's murder in Season 2 of Unsolved Worcester. On March 12th, Watkiss and Cloutier were indicted by a Worcester County grand jury on 10 counts of second-degree murder and charges of arson. Watkiss was also charged with two counts of arson at the Worcester County Jail. They were both charged with attempting to escape an assault and battery on a corrections officer. Months later, however, in June 1975, a Worcester Superior Court judge dropped the arson and second-degree murder charges against Cloutier and Watkiss after it was discovered that Cloutier was a patient at Worcester State Hospital on the night the fire broke out and they couldn't have been at the scene of the fire. The judge said he had serious doubts that teens had anything to do with the fire. Both women did plead guilty to assault and battery on a police officer and their attempt to escape the Worcester County Jail. Watkiss also pleaded guilty to the two counts of arson at the jail. Cloutier was released on probation and Watkiss was sentenced indefinitely to the Massachusetts Correctional Institution in Framingham. 
In 50 years, the indictments of Cloutier and Watkiss would be as close as officials would get to pinning the 1973 fire on someone. Coming up, in light of the deadly fire, City Hall implements new fire and safety measures for landlords. At 5 a.m. on July 11, 1973, the fatal fire at 728 Main Street was finally extinguished. Ten people would die in the fire and dozens were injured. The 56-room, five-story building was nearly at capacity when the fire started. Fifty-four of the rooms were rented in July 1973. The building was owned by Leo Angers of Millbury. Angers also owned a building next door at 722 Main Street. The landlord owned more than 200 apartments and rooms in Maine South. On the ground floor of 728 Maine, Angers kept his offices. Leo's Allen furnished rooms and apartments, as well as an ice cream shop, soft dairy serve of Worcester, was run by Angers' wife. A third shop, Model Cleaners, was owned by Oscar Sahagian. The ground-level space was destroyed in the fire. Angers had a $75,000 insurance policy on the building, but he said he would never recoup his losses, adding that he would lose about $1,000 a week in rent after the fire. The City of Worcester's Law Department tried to collect nearly $15,000 from Angers in demolition costs after the fire, but Angers refused to pay. The city sued Angers for nearly $13,000 of the cost of demolition. In January 1973, the Worcester Tenants Association would name Angers as Slumlord of the Year. He would go on to sell all of his main South properties. By 1975, Angers filed for bankruptcy. According to city records, the building had met all the necessary requirements and fire regulations in 1973 to be open. However, in the immediate aftermath of the July 11th fire, tenants told the Telegram and Gazette the building's emergency lights in the hallways failed to operate. They had to feel their way through the hallways to make their escape from the fire. Other tenants said trash lined the hallways of the building. A year before the fire, a City of Worcester inspector issued a certificate for the building on June 2, 1972. The certificate had expired on June 2, 1973. The building hadn't been re-inspected or recertified before the July 11th fire weeks later. As we mentioned in episode one, the building didn't have any fire protection. There were no sprinklers, no fire escapes, but each room had a window rope ladder or chain to escape. Coming up, the city steps in to find solutions to the problems that plagued 728 Main Street and to avoid further catastrophe. On July 20th, 1973, nine days after the deadly fire at 728 Main Street, city manager Francis McGraw called the special meeting in response to the Five Alarm Fire. From the meeting, the city manager's office decided to ask the law department to prepare a new ordinance implementing a watchman system by law in the city's lodging houses. In the evening, and overnight hours. The city also made plans to meet with lodging house owners to go over the installation of fire alarms, fire prevention partitions on stairways, and automatic sprinklers. In response, lodging house owners said while they would like to make those changes, they couldn't afford to do it. 
Leo Angers, the owner of 728 Main Street, said building owners opposed the city plans and were only interested in installing smoke detection devices in rear stairwells, where Angers said most arsonists start fires. City manager McGraw warned something would be done and the city wasn't going to sit on its hands and wait for another tragedy. A special commission on Lodging House was soon created with the members of the city's health department, Bureau of Public Buildings, Fire Prevention Bureau, and an investigator from the city's license commission. The commission was tasked with coordinating inspections of nearly 250 lodging houses and college dormitories in the city. The city ultimately deciding that new licenses and renewals wouldn't be issued until the buildings comply with the new safety measures, including installing smoke detection alarms in every hallway. The new committee was also required to find a way to coordinate fire, police, and health inspections to work under the same mandates and regulations. Today, these inspections are conducted by the Worcester Fire Department and the City of Worcester's Inspectional Services. Alexander Shemeth, Joseph Person, Alden Cathan, Karen Hardison, Thomas Nichols, Walter Perkins, Daniel Hampton, Helen Warren, Francis Breen, John Lund. These are the names of the ten victims of the July 11, 1973 fire at 728 Main Street. From July 12th to July 15th, these men and women either died at the hospital after being pulled from the fire, or their bodies were recovered from the rubble. But it would be nearly four years later when the fire would finally stop taking lives. Olivine Moxley was 38 years old when she jumped from her third floor room at 728 Main Street. From that day on, Olivine was hospitalized with severe internal injuries and broken bones. But she never recovered. On May 12, 1977, Olivine died at Rutland Heights Hospital from her injuries. Olivine was born in Wareham, Massachusetts. She was a factory worker in Worcester. At the time of her death, she left her mother, five brothers, and three sisters. Olivine Moxley, the fire's 11th victim, is buried at Hope Cemetery. Fifty years later, the July 11, 1973 arson and second-degree murder case remains unsolved. Thank you for listening. I'm Dan Yeager. Don't miss another episode. Click the notification button to get alerts when new episodes of Unsolved Worcester drop. If you enjoyed listening to this episode, please consider clicking the like button for us. And if you subscribe, the next episodes will show up in your feed. Click the bell on the right and select all, and you'll get a notification of when the next episode is ready. If you have any thoughts you'd like to share, please leave them in the comments below. We do read them all and respond to as many as we can. Anyone with information about who is responsible for the fire at 728 Main Street or asked to contact the Worcester Police Detective Bureau at 508-799-8651 or send an anonymous text to 274637. Write TIP WPD plus your message or send an anonymous web-based message at worcestermagovernor forward slash police. Come back on July 25th as Unsolved Worcester Season 5 continues with Episode 6, The Unsolved Murder of 19-Year-Old William Smith on August 21st, 2008. William was a Becker College student. He was stabbed outside of a house party on North Ashland Street. Special thanks to the Worcester Public Library 
the Worcester Police Department, the City of Worcester, and our sponsors for making this possible. Information on the 728 Main Street fire was gathered from multiple resources, including documents from the City of Worcester, reports from the Telegram and Gazette, and more. The Unsolved Worcester podcast music is provided by Tom LaBelzik of the Worcester Jazz Collective. This episode is written and produced by Pat Sargent. Drone footage provided by Ron Scott at New England Sky Picks. Videography and editing by Colin Turner. Sponsorship information announcer Chandler Walsh. This program is supported in part by a grant from the Worcester Arts Council and the National Endowment for the Arts. To find out more about how National Endowment for the Arts grants impact individuals and communities, visit www.arts.gov.